under the ground lie secrets. Accumulated stories and memories. A tangle of the human, ecological, geological. In this corner of North Yorkshire, the fields and village hold subtle traces of the past. Tucked away on a hillside overlooking the River Ure, the quiet village of Olborough has rich archaeological origins. Beneath the farms and fields, the streets and houses, under the maypole and the church, lie the remains of a Roman town, Isurium Brigantum. The rhythms of daily life in the village today and its form on the landscape have developed from this Roman beginning. Streets follow streets, field boundaries trace the town wall. For a long time, very little has been known about this town and its people, but its story continues to grow as every year new discoveries bring to light forgotten fragments of its history. Isurium Brigantum. Its name tells us its status, a civitas capital of the Brigantes, the hill people. The group of people who occupied a large swathe of northern England when the Romans arrived and whose structures of power were reassembled within the new world that followed. The town began life as a small trading settlement on the road between York and the Pennines. An artery beating west-east, fed by valuable minerals from the hills. Close to the banks of the River Ure, and at the highest points that boats could reach, the little settlement grew up around the transfer of goods, the movement of people. And so in 120 AD, a formal town was built. A centre of governance and trade, a hub of activity and connections. A new crossing point was built across the river and from Isurium tramped the army and its hangers-on, on and up to Hadrian's Wall. The town became part of a network that spanned the local, the national and the empire. Its importance is reflected in its design. Swathed down a hillside and jutting out into the floodplain, the town was carefully planned and heavily engineered. Two principal streets crossed north-south and east-west, dividing the rectangular town. It was enclosed by a great wall, red sandstone blocks rising high, with gates where each road entered. And it was a big statement on the landscape. At the centre stood the Forum, a vast limestone construction the beating heart of the town. Its location is now marked by the Church of St Andrews, which was built within the Forum Square, its graveyard burying deep the fine walls of the ranges of the shops and offices that enclosed it. Excavations revealed a rare glimpse of this monumental centre. Grey-blue cobble and clay foundations dug into the red sandy earth, old timbers staining the soil, a pit of molten ash and metal from its later years, reused and battered, and a trowel, discarded from an earlier dig, the archaeology of archaeology in rusted, forgotten form. In the south, three great terraces stepped down the slope, from which large townhouses looked out across the vale to the hills. Isurium's wealthiest inhabitants lived here, and archaeologists are using Victorian excavations and modern geophysical surveys to find out more about them. A courtyard house was equipped with a bath suite, rooms with underfloor heating, and, with cold and hot rooms, the height of luxury. The floors were made of mosaics, small stone tiles creating beautiful repeat patterns and images. Imagine the pad of bare feet over these, the luxurious warmth against the Yorkshire winds. In the house on the next terrace up, the floor of a dining room was decorated with delicate tesserae in a design of the muses. 
Parts were made of glass, and Greek writing meanders through the design. These are not buildings on the far edge of an empire. These finds reflect the cultural diversity and complex connections the residents of Isurium had with the wider world. Other objects reveal aspects of life and death here. The museum was begun in Victorian times, and the collection today holds a wonderful mix of the early and more recent finds. We see the objects of everyday home life, vessels depicting myths and stories, characters formed in clay. The pots and the food and drink they held come from all around the Mediterranean, whilst others were made more locally. We see evidence of leisure time, board games, cockfighting, wrestling, some taking place in the great amphitheatre that sits perched above the town. Sitting in the tiered seats, the view would have opened up around you while the action took place below. What scenes unravelled there? How the shouts and cheers would have billowed out across the landscape below? From the amphitheatre, the funerary areas are visible, lining the road, clustering close to the south and east gates. Great monuments to the dead stood here, announcing their importance to those passing by. Pyres burnt, smoke billowing out across the other enclosures of burials and cremation grounds. Cremation pots, smoke black, hold final fragments safe in the earth. Also fired in smoke and ash, a smith's pot, decorated with the tools of the trade. This was found in recent excavations, buried within the myriad layers from a blacksmith's furnace. Traces of metal in the soil showed that lead was worked here, the air thick with fumes, loud with hammer and tong. Not far from the workshop, in the north of the town, huge warehouses stored goods, carts rocking back and forth to the river, waiting for the seal of approval from those in charge. The river snakes along north of the town, now hunkered down, controlled, siphoned. But the Roman river would be bigger, braided, unpredictable. The floodplain would be pooled and soggy through the winter, the road north skimming through the landscape on its natural raised spur. A great wooden bridge would have crossed on sturdy stone foundations. Visible in surveys, it has been harder to find in the ground, buried metres deep beneath year upon year of alluvium. Quaysides would have lined the bend, boats coming and going down to York, on and out to the Humber, a pulsing channel of trade with Azurian at its heart. Walking around the museum grounds, the story of archaeology itself is written in the landscape. The Victorian excavations tell us not only about the Romans, but the development of archaeological knowledge and the discipline itself. Here, the town wall lies exposed, the trees of a pinetum towering above to draw the visitor on and through. A spiral of steps descends into the quarry where once stone was hewn, its face cut with niches, all grotto and fern. We find connections with the archaeologists who have gone before, bound by our shared interest across time. The few men who came to dig after the First World War, women taking their place at the helm of discovery. The delight of the changing forms of recording and retelling, a beautiful history of our changing ways of seeing and understanding the world. Research at Alborough continues, each year new fragments drawing its story in fresh directions. We delve deep, forming narrative from colour and form, texture and sound. Broad maps focus down to detail, chronologies develop, features connect. This is the joy of archaeology, the slow joining of gaps, imagining the possibilities of forgotten lives and stories. 
a moment's excited contact with the past as a piece of pot or lost needle sees the light of day once more. As you walk the streets of Alborough, across the green, out into the fields and down to the river, imagine the layers that lie beneath. Let your imagination dwell in the possibilities, what has gone before and what stories are waiting to be told. <laughs>